Warning, this is a Kamisawa Bro Impressions review video. It's full of fake accents, noobish tinkering, and spoilerific gameplay. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello comrades, Kamisawa Bro here today with Auto Dealership Tycoon. That's right. This game is a second attempt from Diggity, and uh, honestly, I very much like it. It it, it probably helps that I, I have a bit of a, a you know a history as a car salesman, but uh, yeah yeah we just we're gonna try to ignore that. <laughs> but anyway, so without further ado, I've already been playing a bit of a game, so I figured I'll just show you from here. So essentially, this is your dealership. Oh, isn't it so pretty? Look at all the people walking around and whatnot. You have all sorts of stuff. First off, here are your salespeople. You can literally click on them and, uh, you know, hire people, fire people. If you're paying them too much for too little work or too little for too much work, etc., 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 or if you just want to, you know, replace employees, because see right here is basically their skill level. This is how much you pay them every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Pretty simple. All right. Up here in the sales manager's office is where you can take a look at your new and used inventory. This is my used inventory right here. You can actually right-click on the car to change the price. Yeah, all right. So you can see I don't really have many used cars. You can put a focus on whether you're trying to sell new or used cars, and it'll kind of give you a bit of a bonus towards selling them. But uh, we're going to stick with just selling our Yotoyas. That's right. we got five Eris's, five Chipolas, five Four Walkers, and five Tongres. Keep in mind, there are multiple car companies in the game. you got Dove, you got Vord, you got GEW, Lianza. And then your Toya. So you got a couple of different uh, cars you can buy from. It, it basically, you know, different values, different market shares. And you can see those over here on the upgrades. Yeah, yeah. Basically, you can pick uh, if you have enough money. You can buy an additional uh, license to sell a certain type of car. Uh, in this case, I could buy Dub. I'm not going to, but I could if I wanted to. All right. You've also, on the next page, got upgrades for all of your buildings. The upgrades literally work uh, for like building one, building two, etc., etc. So as you can see here, these were the upgrades for building three, which I am not in yet. If we go right here, we can see that you know. You start out with this building. I've upgraded to this building. This would be building three. It's four thousand dollars a day for building three, so that's why I haven't bought that one yet. Because this is a big difference between one thousand two hundred and four thousand. That's right. Now, the bigger you get, the more showroom and service traffic you get as well. Generally, the more parts storage you have, and it gives you a little thing that says "Design for." Two or more brand licenses yes, and a lot of good stuff. So basically, building five would be the biggest building, which is actually a pretty decent sized little building there. All right, all right, pretty cool, pretty cool. And then you get your finance manager. We don't worry too much about them. <laughs> you need a finance manager to buy other dealerships if you want to, but you can see here that these other dealerships are a bit too expensive for my taste, so I'm not going to buy those. All right, all right, looking good. So, the last thing I'll talk about real quick before I start today is the service department. The service department pretty much runs itself. You just need to make sure you have enough parts. You literally just buy parts by clicking on it. There's different parts for different cars. Uh, as you can see, used car parts, Yotoya parts, new Yotoya parts, new dub parts, new Ford parts, GW parts, so on and so forth. All right. So let's go ahead and start the day. Basically what's going to happen now that we started the day, customers are going to come into the service department and get their shit fixed. And then customers are going to come in here and they're going to buy stuff. It's going to be one beautiful 
like chain of life kind of thing, circle of life of people coming in, buying stuff. And there we go. See, look, someone bought a full walker. There's actually an event going on right now for us to sell eight Eris SEs, which I kind of already screwed the pooch on because I didn't lower the price on the Eris's. So there's a pretty good chance that's not going to happen. So now that you've kind of seen how this game plays, this is, this is quite simply how it plays. Um... That brings me to my assessment, my actual review of the game. What do I think of it? Well, I actually very much like it. Again, I, I, I'm kind of biased because of my experience as a car salesman. You'll actually get like tiny events that pop up in the bottom right corner and stuff. That uh, it, it's it's just really funny uh, because it reminds me of when I was a car salesman and then when I started working in the service department of a dealership um, and so on. It's just. <laughs> It brings back memories. Very nostalgic, so I'm kind of biased in that regard. Um, but the mechanics are simple. I think that Diggity really learned from his experience with the first game he made, which was Lunch Truck Tycoon. Um, I personally was not much of a fan of it. I played it when it first came out, and I just didn't really enjoy the game. Um, and I'll admit, I was a bit harsh on it. But... Oh damn, we didn't do the we we failed the challenge. But yeah, this game most certainly is a significant improvement. Now of course it's still graphically and aesthetically pretty simple, um, and the music gets kind of annoying, so honestly I have it just plain out muted. Um but, you know, overall this is this is definitely a step in the right direction. And even then, like you can see a lot of personality got went into this game as well. Uh, like just with with special characters who show up, like the lady in pink or the guy in the white hat. Um, you'll in, as you play the game, you'll kind of see who I'm talking about. Uh, I don't really want to ruin the fun. And then you just like the the random events you get are pretty funny as well. Like where I I've actually experienced this in real life, where basically a customer came in saying someone shat in their car. <laughs> And they're like, they're like, oh, but it wasn't, it wasn't in there. It wasn't in there when I left the lot. It's like, yeah, you, you, you no, know, no, it wasn't. The, the, it, like, it was in there when they left the lot, basically. Kind of just thing is what they were saying. Anyway, less about me, more about the game. <laughs> Pretty much, it's, it's, it's a little grindy. Like, it can definitely take some time to get up to the higher stages of the game. Um... Like, this right here, getting to this point in the game, took me about an hour and a half or so. Almost two hours. But, at the same time, that's a good thing. Because I feel like once you kind of max out on this game, the replayability kind of goes down. Unless you're just really, really into tycoon games and min-maxing and trying to figure out the fastest way to uh, get money, essentially the fastest way to pull that off because I will admit it has taken me a long time to get to this point so you know you know it's a, it's a little bit of a challenge it is it is there's also car auction fee a car auction feature I haven't actually shown in the video just FYI the little card pops up here and you can click on it and you can go buy cars at auction as you can see, people are even turning in. Oh, shit, I'm sold out on heiresses? Oh, that's not good. My CSR rating's going to go down. But anyway, um, as you can see, people trade in their vehicles as well, and you can buy them for a certain price. I tend to do that just because it's easier than going to the auction. And even then, as long as I have one or two used vehicles, I'm happy Like, because that, that works for me. Shit, is everybody coming in for heiresses today? Holy crap, my CSR rating's gone down too already. Jeez, yes, yeah, stop. Try another deal. Go somewhere else. One feature I am very glad that he added in because I, I played the very uh, very early beta version of the game, uh, and he did like there wasn't actually any uh, things over their heads that showed when they if they do or do not buy a car. Like, okay, so why did you buy the car? Uh, why didn't you buy the car? So that's something. The comment bubble, to me, it adds just a smidge of, like, immersion 
you know, it, it, it makes it a bit more than just saying no sale because when you just keep getting no sale, no sale, no sale, no sale, you don't really know what you're doing wrong. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's kind of nice that basically you can see it really doesn't have anything to do with you. The customers are just assholes. <laughs> like in this case, I'll try another dealer. Fuck you. You go to another deal. You won't get a better deal, yo, yo, butthole. Are you reading from a script? LOL. Your mom's reading from a script. That's right. Anyway. <laughs> you can tell I'm an adult. This has been Commissar Bro. Like I said, if you like this game, definitely support the developer on it. Honestly, it's a pretty fun little game, and uh, it's not too expensive. So, and all in all, I don't, I don't see why not. I definitely suggest it. And especially as a car salesman, or at least an ex-car salesman to you guys. I'd say this is actually pretty damn close to uh, uh, basically generalizing the business. It's, it's pretty damn close. So, yeah, if this is something you're into, you should, you should totally, totally get this game. It's pretty awesome. Anyway, this has been Comics Hall Bro. I'll see all you beautiful people next time.